Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, in the meshless name of Yahushua Mashiach. This is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Come Out of Her, My People broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. Well, ladies and gentlemen, like I say in all my broadcasts, I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart, ladies and gentlemen. We bring the truth raw and uncut. If you like the truth raw and uncut, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. And ladies and gentlemen, we don't beat around the bush. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we let the chips fall where they may. And we don't apologize for declaring the truth. We make a lot of people uh, ruffle a lot of people feathers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Paul said in Galatians 4 and 16, Have I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. This broadcast has made a lot of enemies. Not for us doing anything wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but because we proclaim the truth. Yahoshua uh, told his disciples, The world can't hate you, but the world hates me. Because I speak of the evil works that are in the world, ladies and gentlemen. When you cry out against sin and when you cry out against the wicked actions of men, mankind in this hour, people will come unglued. They will hate you. Well, the Bible says that Yahoshua was hated without a cause. <clears throat> well, we're going to get right into our message on today. When you count the mathematics and look at black people in the U.S. There are 233 independent nations on the earth and out of the 233 independent nations, black people at $1.3 trillion are the eighth richest people in the world. Yet they don't have anything in their community that they can call their own. The simple fact that black people in America are the eighth richest people on the earth and don't have their own educational system, don't feed themselves, grow their own food, don't own farms, ladies and gentlemen, it's an indication that they have the dollars, but they need some sense. Black people blame the white man for many of their problems, but they spend 97% of their money with him. Black people in the U.S. have $1.3 trillion in money, but that is income, but that is not wealth. There is a big difference between income and wealth. So when the math is calculated, black people own less than 2% of the wealth of the United States of America. Income and wealth are two different concepts. Let me say that again. Income and wealth are two different concepts. Income is the money you earn by exchange of your time or the sale of a good product or service. But wealth is when you exchange that money for something that either keeps value or increase in value over time. Black people are the leaders in unnecessary spending. Black people buy things that they don't need. Black people lack in discipline, temperance, and self-control. Proverbs 24 and verse 28 declares, He that have no rule 
over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. We have a lot of name brand stuff, but no businesses that we can pass down to our children or real estate that increase or keeps its value over time. African Americans have income, but don't have the wealth. We have dollars, but we need some common sense. Out of that $1.3 trillion that black people have, we spend $23 billion a year on clothes, $11 billion a year on furniture, $3.2 billion on keeping up with the latest cell phones that come out, $46 billion on cars a year, $60 billion on legal and illegal drugs, $32 billion a year on hair products and cosmetics. We give $2.60 million to the church, and more than half of that goes into the pockets of religious pimps and hustlers behind the pulpit and spend only $300 million on the purchase of books and religious literature to educate our minds. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. African Americans are being destroyed because they lack knowledge. The scripture says in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we may not be in chains physically and shackles physically, but our minds are enslaved, ladies and gentlemen. We have no knowledge of Yahweh and no knowledge of his truth. We should be investing in more of building up our mind and building up of our character, integrity, and spirituality. We need the sense that we need to go with those dollars so that when we marry our wealth with some wisdom and knowledge and understanding, we can actually leave something behind for our children and our children's children that they can call their own. African Americans' brains have been hardwired where we connect happiness to spending. We have to disconnect the wire in our brain from happiness and spending to happiness and saving and investing. Proverbs 13 and 22 declares, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children, children. Rich people stay rich because they pretend to be poor. And poor people stay poor because they pretend to be rich. People go broke for trying to buy respect. People feel a sense of worth from what they put on the outside of themselves. Our sense of worth don't come from the house we live in or the car we drive or the jewelry we put on or the money we possess or the job that we work. The real sense of worth comes from being a child of Yahweh and putting wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in our hearts. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What can he give in exchange for his soul? Proverbs 
chapter 4, verses 7 through 8 declares, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. True happiness, ladies and gentlemen, comes from within, not without. The Bible says the kingdom of Elohim is not in meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14 and verse 17. True happiness comes from within, not without. Yahushua said that the kingdom of Elohim shall be within you. In this world only, we have hope in Mashiach, we are all men most miserable. Yahushua Mashiach in you, the hope of glory. Many people got it all twisted. Unfortunately, black people have outsourced their happiness. We are looking for happiness to come from other people and monetary and material things. The less we have inside of us, the more we think we need outside of us. Did you hear that? The less we have inside of us, the more we think we need outside of us. Paul said, be not drunk with wine where is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. So the less we have inside of us, the more we think we need outside of us to make us feel happy and make us feel like we are somebody. White people are different from black people. Black people spend everything they make. We are consumers. White people and rich people teach their children is to follow what's called the 10, 10, 10, 70 rule. 10% of your money you should give to a cause you believe in, a charity. 10% of your money you should save. Put in a savings account for yourself. The other 10% you should develop an investment fund to figure out how you can find something to make your money work. Ladies and gentlemen, for you instead of you working for your money, Ladies and gentlemen, you should allow your money to work for you. Glory to Yahweh. The Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 18, it says that Yahweh gives us power to get wealth. Yahweh gives us creativity. We, we can become creative and Yahweh would give us the knowledge and understanding ladies and gentlemen to be entrepreneurs amen what business to start Yahweh would give us the knowledge and the understanding to do that ladies and gentlemen glory to Yahweh for the truth for your money and then the rest of your life should be lived off that 70%, the 10, 10, 10, 70, ladies and gentlemen, rule. This is what uh, rich people and white people teach their children. Unfortunately, many cannot apply this principle because of low wages and limited amount of funds. But those who could follow this principle, it would benefit them greatly. With the $1.3 trillion 
income that black people have in the U.S., they are richer than the country of Spain and Mexico. Spain has 46 million people, about the same amount of the numbers among blacks in the U.S. Black people in the U.S. make up almost 14% of the U.S. population. But they are maintaining 208,000 square mile land mass, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about Spain, 208,000 square mile land mass where they have their own educational system, their own government, they have their own world. With the same amount of people in the black community in the U.S., with $600 billion less money than black people in the U.S. The income of black people in the U.S. is $1.3 trillion. Mexico have an income of $637 billion. This is what they bring in a year. But they are maintaining 760,000 square mile land mass with 130 million people. Mexico have three times more people than black people in the U.S. And half the money black people have in the U.S. And they grow their own food, have their own school system, and government and black people in the U.S. have double their money. What should black people be able to do for themselves? Black people need to stop blaming the white man for all of their problems. With the $1.3 trillion income, African Americans, a man, have annually, ladies and gentlemen, their annual income makes them the eighth wealthiest in the world. The eighth wealthiest people in the world, ladies and gentlemen. 233 independent nations, but African Americans in the U.S., listen, are the eighth wealthiest people on planet Earth. Are you listening to me? Wealthier than many European countries. Wealthier than all of the African countries. Wealthier, ladies and gentlemen, in, in countries in the Middle East. Wealthier than the uh, uh, people in the West Indies, ladies and gentlemen, in other countries. Out of 233 independent nations in the world, they have the world's eighth highest income and have nothing to show for it. If just the black millionaires and billionaires in the U.S. would pool together 30% of their income, black people could have their own school system, can purchase land and grow their own food, buy their own farms, have their own department stores and grocery chains, have their own banks and credit unions, build their own cars, farm equipment, etc. Black people can own their own airlines, bus lines, train lines, black people in the U.S. could be self-supported. We would never have to beg the U.S. government for reparations. We can refurbish every historic black college and university and give thousands of underprivileged youth free education.
We could invest in African countries and build up their economies. Black people could create jobs and hire tens of thousands from the businesses that they have started up. It is shameful and ridiculous for the annual income that black people have in the U.S. for us as a people to possess practically nothing. Black people have a selfish spirit. <clears throat> I never seen a people that hate their own people as much as African Americans. And those who have gotten a piece of the pie have forgot where they came from. There is so much distrust and envy and jealousy among African Americans. They have the crab mentality. You know, you put a lot of crabs in a bucket, ladies and gentlemen, and when one crab seems that he's getting out of the bucket, another crab take his claw and pull him down. Black people have that same mentality. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 2 declares, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. It goes on, but we'll stop there at verse 2. But if this don't give us a vivid picture of black people, I don't know what else. Paul said in the last days, perilous times shall come. We are definitely in these days, Paul prophesied about nearly 2,000 years ago that will come. The first characteristic of men in the last days, it says, for men shall be lovers of themselves. This is selfishness. This is the main corporate that African Americans have nothing to show for the money they possess. Black people feel like they got theirs and everyone else must get theirs. I got mine. I worked hard to get this and you got to get your own. I mean a dog-eat-dog -dog mentality. Then they are afraid to give because they don't want to ever be poor again. So they board up everything, hoard up rather, everything. They can't imagine ever being poor again. Ladies and gentlemen, they hate the thought of ever being poor again. Many of them came out of the projects. Ladies and gentlemen, many were homeless, many lived in the ghettos, the slums, had rough lives, and they don't want to go back to that lifestyle. Well, the Bible says fear has torment. He that is made perfect in love has no fear. Perfect love casts out fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 tell us, for Yahweh is not giving us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and the sound mind. That spirit of fear, amen, can control us, ladies and gentlemen, from doing the will of Yahweh. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 through 19 declares, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living Elohim, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. The blame game is up for black people. With all the obstacles and obstructions that white people have 
placed in black people's paths to prevent them from progressing. We have no excuse for not having anything in our communities that we can call our own. The eighth richest income in the world. African Americans only have a fraction of the wealth that whites have. At the medium, non-retired African Americans had $13,460 in wealth in 2016, or only 9.5% of the medium wealth of $142,180 that whites had at the same time. The average white household have seven times more wealth than the average black household. The average white high school dropout has a higher income than the average black college graduate. Even with the economic inequality that black people face in the U.S. daily, black people have enough financial clout to turn our communities around overnight. $1.3 trillion is a lot of money. The morality of African Americans have went down the toilet. This is the main reason why, ladies and gentlemen, we are suffering the way we are suffering. Immorality, debauchery, ladies and gentlemen, is running rampant among our people. Even the aged people, the elderly, are bad examples to our young people, ladies and gentlemen. Bad examples. The hip hop culture is disgusting. And the church in the black community have lost its way. Everything is about money. Our people are being exploited by our preachers. Our preachers, ladies and gentlemen, are making merchandise out of our people. We have religious pimps and hustlers and gangsters behind the pulpit today. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my first face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins. Proverbs 14 and 34 declares righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. There is a reproach, a stain, on the African Americans. There is a reproach on us. All the clout, all the money, $1.3 trillion that they possess, but look at our communities, ravished with crime, violence, homicides. Amen. Look at the urban places. Look at the ghettos and the slums, ladies and gentlemen. Look at what's taking place in the black community with all this financial backing that we have. Sin is a reproach to any people, but righteousness would exalt a nation. Yahweh will heal our land. He will heal our neighborhoods. He will heal our communities. He will heal, ladies and gentlemen, our land if we will repent and turn back to Yahweh. Black people have so many oppositions, so many obstructions, so many strikes against them.
the racism we experience, the bigotry, the discrimination, the inequality and, and injustice. You would think that these things would make us turn to Yahweh. You would think that these things would drive us to Yahweh. But ladies and gentlemen, they have not done it. Many of our people have arrived. They feel that they have arrived. Many of professional athletes, ladies and gentlemen, actors, doctors, scientists, astronauts, ladies and professors, oh yes, we think we have arrived. And we forgot about those that are down and out, downtrodden, living in hopelessness and despair, ladies and gentlemen. But I want you to know, I want you to know, there's still hope if we would turn back to Yahweh Almighty. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5 declares, why should you be stricken anymore? Yahweh told the children of Judah, why would you be stricken anymore? I, I beat you with many stripes. I chastise you. I've done everything. I brought destruction in your life. Yes. I've struck in you, but you have not returned. And it goes on and says, you will revolt more and more. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The more Yahweh struck them, brought calamities, destructions, ladies and gentlemen, tragedies in their lives. Are you listening to me? The more they revolted, the more Ladies and gentlemen, they revolted against Yahweh. African Americans are experiencing the curses in Deuteronomy 28. Yahweh said if we will hearken unto his word, his law, he said we will be blessing the city. We'll be blessed when we come out of the city. We'll be blessed in the field. We'll be blessed when we come out of the field. He said he will bless the fruits of our body, even our livestock. He will bless it. He said that when your enemy come in one way, they'll flee before you seven ways. Glory to Yahweh. And I'll make you the head. Glory to Yahweh. And not to tell. He said, I will make you the head and not the tail. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. You shall be above only and not beneath. And you shall lend to many nations. If you hearken unto the law and the word of Yahweh. But if you will not hearken, <coughs> Yahweh said, you'll be cursing the city. Curse in the field. The fruit of your body be cursed. Your livestock will be cursed. Your enemies will come before you one way. You'll flee before them seven years. You'll only be beneath and not above if you don't hearken to the voice of Yahweh. And I see our people, and we have turned our backs on Yahweh, walking contrary to Yahweh. And this, this is the reason why we have this reproach on us. Well, I see my time has got away. This is Yahweh's servant. Amen. Reginald M. Graham. We appreciate you for taking the time and listening to this broadcast. And if you will, we would love you to uh, subscribe, like, and share. Can you do that for us? Subscribe, like, and share to this broadcast. And send your comments. Write those comments. We would like to hear your thoughts. Well, 
Until the next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Shalom.